Poverty was the flavor of the day. Could be 15 people in a two, three bedroom apartment. The landlords didn't take good care of the building, so it was rats, roaches. We felt forgotten. We felt like we were our own world where we just had to fend for ourselves, and we did fend for ourselves. That's what growing up in the Bronx was like. You know, a lot of violence, a lot of people lost on, on drugs. We lost 60% of the population, you know, in this community because of the financial disinvestment that led to the era of the burning Bronx. The space where we're sitting in right now, all of it across the street, you know, most of it on the block that I grew up on, were just like literally wrecks, just shells of buildings. It's very easy to look at the Bronx in terms of deficits, redlining, disinvestment, white flight, loss of economic opportunity. But during those years, the Bronx was also creating more varieties of popular music than any place in the world. We needed a, a, an outlet to just have peace. We saw New York City as a billboard. The train going by as a billboard with your name on it. it was like, oh, I'm somebody, I'm famous, you know. I'm here, I'm here in this, in this city, I'm here in this community, and you're not gonna ignore me. You're gonna see my tag here, you're gonna see my mark there, you're gonna see my mark everywhere. I do find it ironic that one of the richest parts of our culture actually comes from a place that is still one of the poorest parts of our country. Big money, nobody involved in Bronx hip hop made big money, but they saved lives. They gave lives meaning. These kids had everything taken away from them and they created something to give their lives direction, meaning, safety, and a sense that their talent meant something.